On the Shannon and Ern, we say be prepared and be safe. The following short film will help you prepare for your holiday and provide you with some basic safety guidelines. Before you set off for the first time, save Carrick Craft and emergency phone numbers in each of your crew's mobile phones. Make sure you are aware of the location of all the safety equipment and features, such as the first aid box, fire extinguisher, life jackets, and that all the crew know how to work the emergency escape hatch. Always wear life jackets when moving out on deck, especially when mooring or going through locks. Make sure you practice putting a life jacket on quickly. And be aware that by law, children under the age of 16 must wear life jackets at all times when out on deck or on a jetty. Before each journey, secure all items on deck, such as bicycles. Make sure the oars in the dinghy are underneath the seats. And in particular, tidy ropes safely, as a trailing rope can become tangled around the prop. The greatest risk to you or your crew when cruising is injury from slipping and falling on a wet deck or jetty. Remember the golden rule, one hand for the boat, and one hand for you. Always hold onto a handrail and never jump onto a boat or jetty. Bring the boat close to the jetty and always step on. And finally, if you suspect a mechanical or electrical problem, don't attempt repair yourself. Phone us for advice and remember, never smoke when changing a gas cylinder. The wheel is known as the helm and operates in much the same way as the steering wheel in a car. With a dual helm system, change over par between the upper and lower helms using this lever. The throttle controls the speed of the craft by bringing it into a forward, neutral or reverse direction. It also acts as a brake. By bringing the lever sharply into reverse, you can bring the boat to a stop. The navigation guide provides detailed information and advice on how to navigate through all areas of the waterways. Keep it open at all times and constantly check your position. Also, the captain's handbook contains answers to all the questions you may need to ask about your cruiser. It also contains useful local information such as telephone numbers. Keep it to hand at all times. Just as there are rules of the road, there are rules of the waterway, which apply when meeting other boats. Think of driving on the continent. Use the right-hand lane in the channel, keeping other boats to your left when meeting. And when overtaking, keep slower craft to your right. The rule on open water is that when boats converge, you give way to craft on your right. Always cruise at a safe speed when passing through bridges, locks and in narrow channels, or passing close to stationary craft, smaller craft or marinas. Like this example, this means little or no wake. If your boat is causing a large wake on the shore, you are travelling too fast and you may be reported to the river wardens or police. When travelling downstream, you have right of way at bridges and narrow channels, except when meeting a craft which would have difficulty stopping, such as a sailing boat or a large barge. Always use the navigation guide and read the markers on each bridge to determine which arch you should pass through. If you have a canopy over the deck, take extra care to make sure you have sufficient clearance to pass under the bridge. The bridges at Ruski and Tarman Barry are too low for most craft to pass under, so you will have to telephone the nearest lock keeper to come and raise the bridge. See the navigation guide for full details. Some bridges have air draft gauges so that you can see if there is sufficient clearance. The air draft of your boat is in the captain's handbook. The navigation guide indicates areas of the waterways which may at times have strong currents. 
These are not dangerous, but can affect the way your cruiser handles. You will need to take currents into account when mooring or passing through narrow bridges. Travelling with a fast flow is fine in a wide channel, but it can be alarming for a novice when approaching a narrow entrance such as a bridge. Slow the boat as much as possible while continually checking your steering well in advance of your approach. If in any doubt, turn back upstream to regain control of your craft. Wind and waves will affect how your cruiser handles. Wind can blow your boat off course when manoeuvring at low speed such as casting off a jetty and of course waves will make your craft rock. This is all part of cruising and not something to be concerned about other than a very heavy swell. Should you ever get caught in a heavy swell, the first rule is don't panic. Your craft can take it. Don't speed up and punch through the waves to try to get to shelter, as this will only add to the drama. Instead, slow down and gently ride the waves. Always keep the boat going against or with the waves. Never side on. If you must turn back, brief your crew, and matching your speed to the oncoming wave, make sure you turn quickly and away from the closest shore. The boat will sway from side to side until you complete your move. Now go in the wave's general direction, matching its speed, and ride the swell back to calmer water. Finally, on the large locks, it can be difficult at times to see the navigation markers at a distance. As you can see from the image, if you use your binoculars and navigation guide, it will be much easier to keep on course. Water taps are provided at most public jetties and can be found using the navigation guide. We recommend that you refill at every opportunity. The water filler cap will be found on the deck and is clearly marked. Many jetties have taps with hoses supplied, but for those which don't, each cruiser is supplied with the hose, usually kept in the hold at the rear of most boats. Run the tap on the jetty for a few minutes to flush out the hose. Then carefully holding onto the rail, Bring the hose round the side of the cruiser with the water filler. Use the key provided to open the filler and place the hose well into the hole. Turn the tap on until water starts to overflow. It can take up to 20 minutes to fill a tank, so be patient. A coffee is very welcome at this stage. Once full, replace the filler cap. If you require a pump out during your holiday, call at one of our bases where we will provide this service free of charge. Other cruiser hire companies can be found in the navigation guide and they will do a pump out, but there will be a small charge. Unmanned pump out facilities can be found using the navigation guide and the cost is two units paid by inserting a prepaid smart card into the pump out unit. Remember, Many cruisers have two bathrooms and two toilet tanks, and once you have located the relevant toilet tank caps, unscrew the larger cap with the key provided, normally found in the forward bathroom on the cruiser. Insert the nozzle into the hole and turn the valve along the length of the hose to commence the pump out. You will know when the tank is empty when the plastic indicator between the valve and the end of the hose is clear of any fluids. When empty, Close the pump out valve by turning it at right angles to the hose and screw the cap back into the deck opening and thoroughly wash your hands with soap and warm water. You will be provided with a detailed navigation guide when you arrive at our marina. Let's have a look at a typical page. This page is taken from our navigation guide and maps a section of Loch Ree. Islands are coloured yellow and you should keep at least 100 metres offshore unless you are mooring at a recognised jetty or passing through a clearly identified channel. Most of the lake is represented on the chart in white. This is water over 2 metres deep and is safe for you to navigate in any direction. Light blue areas of the chart indicate shallow water. Do not enter even if you see other boats. They may have local knowledge, but you could easily run aground. When such shallow areas are marked with a red X, this indicates submerged hazards such as sharp rocks. There are very few areas such as this, 
but they are all clearly marked in the guide. The mainland is also coloured yellow, and as with islands, keep at least 100 metres offshore unless approaching a recognised jetty or passing through a channel, river or canal. A line of black dots indicates a suggested route. You do not have to follow these routes, but they tend to be the quickest. A black line along the shore indicates a public jetty. Follow the white arrow to see the layout of the jetty as shown in the box. Use this illustration to plan your approach when mooring. Now that you see just how easy it is to understand and use the navigation guide, let's look at the different types of navigation markers in a little bit more detail. Red and green markers are placed close to shallow water. By keeping the navigation guide open as you cruise, and by continually referencing your position on the water to the markers on the chart, you will never get lost. These symbols represent posts. Red posts are capped with a circular disc, and green posts with a square. The different shapes help to identify a marker in poor visibility or at a distance. Pillars are found in Loch Derg, where they are labelled A to J, and Loch Gree, where they are numbered 1 to 9. These are large lakes and the pillars are visible from a greater distance. Identify each pillar to accurately locate your position on the chart. This yellow symbol indicates a yachting buoy, which is used for racing and not used for navigation. When travelling upstream in rivers and canals, keep red markers to your left and green markers to your right. Going downstream, the opposite applies. Keep red to the right and green to your left. Pay particular attention to the layout of markers on lakes, especially at the entrances to harbours and bays. Constantly refer to the navigation guide. The system on Loch Earn is slightly different. Red and white markers are placed at the margins of shallow water and you must always pass on the white side. Many markers are referenced with a number which can be located on the chart and by using these reference numbers you will never get lost. This marker means no entry. If you see a no entry marker, it means just that. Don't go past it. Red diamonds indicate a submerged rock or reef. Always give a wide berth. White cairns are navigation beacons and can be seen from a distance of many miles. Use these cairns to set your course across the lake. Use the navigation guide to plan your approach to a jetty well in advance and take into account the direction of the wind and current. Use the radio to listen to the weather forecast and if bad weather is due, check the navigation guide to establish if the jetty is suitable for an overnight stay. As you approach, ensure the crew have their life jackets on and are briefed on how and where you plan to moor. Reposition the dinghy if necessary, so that it doesn't get crushed between the cruiser and the jetty. And always supervise children when they are helping on deck. Remind the crew not to jump onto the jetty or cruiser, especially if wet, and to be mindful of getting fingers caught between the rope and cleat when tying up the boat. Let's now look at the theory of bringing a boat onto a jetty in different conditions. Mooring against the wind is one of the most challenging manoeuvres. Mooring against the wind is difficult as the wind will blow you off the jetty as you try to tie up. So approach the jetty from downwind, come close to the jetty and then turn away. The wind will blow you further away, so put the boat in reverse gear and bring the stern of the boat to the jetty. Don't worry about the angle of the boat to the jetty, we'll sort that later. Crew steps ashore and quickly ties off the stern line. Now the captain turns the wheel fully towards the jetty, on the left in this case, and engages forward gear 
and apply some throttle. The bow of the boat will swing gently towards the jetty. If it's not swinging, apply a little bit more throttle, but it should be gentle, as in the video. The crew quickly ties off the by rope, and at this stage the captain can put the boat in neutral. The captain and crew can then tidy up the stern line and, if necessary, the byline. This is definitely the easiest way to moor a boat against the wind. And don't forget to tidy all your lines, coil them neatly and lay them either on the boat or on the jetty. When planning to leave a Murray, it is most important to make sure the dinghy is not trapped underneath the jetty. Before we look at the techniques used to leave a jetty under various conditions, we must first understand how a cruiser steers compared to a car. As you can see, the back of the cruiser moves out as it is turned, so you must always ensure you are a couple of metres away from the jetty and other boats before turning the wheel. Failure to take the steering characteristics into account could be a very costly mistake as the cruiser bumps along the jetty and perhaps other boats. Now that you are familiar with the way a cruiser steers, let's look at an important technique used for casting off and one which you will use almost every time you leave a jetty. You will find mastering this skill as useful in flat cam conditions as it is in more challenging situations such as a strong onshore wind. Casting off against the wind with the wind blowing you onto the jetty requires a little bit more planning. To cast off, have the crew member on shore untie the by rope and then the stern rope before stepping on board. The wind will hold the cruiser against the jetty. The captain should turn the helm towards the jetty and apply forward throttle. As the cruiser moves forward against the jetty, the stern will swing out. Now put the throttle in reverse and take the cruiser safely away from the jetty keeping the helm fully locked towards the jetty. Repeat this manoeuvre until you are fully cleared of the jetty and other craft. Now you are free to continue your journey exploring the waterways of the Shannon and Dern. The purpose of locks on a waterway is to enable craft to move safely from one water level to another using a series of lock gates and sluices. Remember that manned locks on the Shannon are always closed for lunch from 1pm to 2pm. As you approach the lock, the captain should brief the crew and ask them to put on their life jackets. This is also a good time to leave aside the correct change to pay the lock keeper for your passage through the lock. Remain moored to the jetty until the gates open and the boats in the lock come out. Do not move forward towards the open gate until all the boats in the lock have left. The lock keeper will instruct you to bring your cruiser into the lock and where to position it. Different locks have different capacities and the lock keeper will try to maximise the number of boats in the lock, so don't be alarmed as it can get quite crowded. Ensure your ropes are tangled and not free before passing them to the lock keeper. Also, make sure there are no fishing hooks caught in your ropes, as this is a real hazard to both the crew and the lock keeper. The lock keeper will ask for your fare at this stage. The lock keeper will take the fore and aft ropes from the crew using a boat hook. Never throw a rope. People have been injured or have fallen when trying to catch ropes. Always use the boat hook 
and don't take risks with your own safety by not wearing a life jacket whilst in the lock. Remind everyone to look out for the dinghy so it doesn't become trapped between the cruiser and the lock. The two ropes will be looped around the bollards on the lock and passed back to the crew on the boat using a boat hook. Never tie the ropes to anything on the lock. Instead, the crew should keep the boat in place using both the ropes and the boat hook. Turn off your engine as soon as the boat is secured in the lock. Slowly the lock will fill or empty and the boat will rise or fall. The crew should take up slack or pay out rope to keep the boat in position. It can take five to 10 minutes to fill or empty a lock. During this time, the water in the lock can become turbulent as the sluice doors are opened. Continue to hold the boat securely. When the water level in the lock is at the correct level for the boats in the lock to proceed, you can pull the ropes free of the bollards and then pull them back on board. The lock gates will slowly open, leaving your passage clear to leave the lock. The lock keeper will direct the order in which the boat should leave the lock. Bring your steering to centre before moving out of the lock as damage can be caused by stern swing when leaving locks. It's as simple as that, and after the crew safely secure the ropes, you can continue on your journey. Locks on the Shannon Urn waterway are automated and self-operated by the crew. If you have arrived at a lock first, you have right of way but if you see another boat coming downstream and can speed their journey by waiting just a short time so that they benefit whilst you empty the lock, then do so. Be courteous and give them passage. When going upstream, the lock needs to be empty. The captain should brief the crew and ask them to put on their life jackets. Remind everyone to look out for the dinghy so that it does not become trapped between the cruiser and the lock. A red light means another boat is using the lock. If a cruiser is coming downstream, as its crew empties the lock, water will gush out from the sluice doors at the bottom of the lock gates. Wait at the downstream jetty until the craft using the lock makes its exit. The crew member you put ashore will operate the lock by inserting a prepaid smart card into the lock control panel. Then the crew member will open and close the gates by pressing the buttons on the panel. Once the boat is safely inside the lock, press the close gate button. A continuous buzzer will sound as the gates slowly start to close. The crew member on shore should hold their finger on the button until both the lock gates and sluice doors are fully closed. If at any stage in this process a procedure has not been completed, an intermittent alarm will sound from the control panel and you will not be able to continue until the previous procedure has been completed. Possible complications can arise if the gates become jammed with rubbish. This is unlikely, but if you require assistance, use the intercom to contact the lock warden or phone using one of the numbers found in the navigation guide. The emergency stop button is used to stop the current action. For example, if a dinghy became trapped between closing gates. The crew member on the lock should take the fore and aft ropes from the crew on board using a boat hook. Never throw a rope. People have been injured or fallen in trying to catch ropes. Always use the boat hook and don't take risks with your own safety by not wearing a life jacket whilst on the lock. The two ropes should be looped around the bollards on the lock and passed back down to the crew in the boat using a boat hook. Never tie the ropes to anything on the lock. Instead, the crew members on board should keep the boat in place using both the ropes and boat hooks. After confirming with the captain, press the two buttons on the control panel to let the water into the lock through the sluice doors on the upstream gates. Press the buttons one at a time until the buzzer signs indicating the sluice door is fully open. The second sluice will not open until the first sluice is fully open. Slowly the lock will fill and the cruiser will rise. The crew on board should take up the slack on the ropes, keeping the boat in position. The crew member on the lock should check the water levels on both sides of the upstream gate and when at an equal height, 
should press the button on the lock control panel to open the gates. The lock gates will slowly open, leaving your passage clear to leave the lock. It's as simple as that, and after the crew safely secure the ropes, and under the captain's careful charge, the cruiser can slowly leave the lock. Taking a craft downstream is a reversal of the upstream process. In an emergency, keep calm. Get your life jackets on and switch on all mobile phones. Assess the situation and always put the safety of people before that of the cruiser or other property. If your boat is grounded in calm weather, lift the floorboards to check if the boat is taking in water. Hang out your distress flag and phone us for advice. If your phone has no signal, ask another boat to phone on your behalf. Remain on your cruiser until help arrives. If either your cruiser or another boat is grounded in poor weather and taking in water, immediately phone us for advice. Then put out your distress flag. The boat is grounded because it is in a shallow area and therefore unlikely to sink. And whilst uncomfortable for the crew, staying on board until help arrives will be the safest thing to do. If the craft is drifting because of mechanical failure, phone us, drop anchor and put out your distress flag. If the boat runs aground, it is unlikely to come to any serious harm, but be aware of obvious dangers. For example, if drifting under a low bridge, get below deck. If when cruising, someone falls overboard, it is essential to try to stay calm whilst acting quickly. Throw the life ring while holding on to the rope. Reverse thrust to stop the boat and cut the power. Encourage the person overboard to get to the life ring and to conserve energy by not thrashing about. Ensuring the throttle is in neutral, pull the person towards the stern and once they have caught hold of the ladder, if they are able, help them climb back on board. If the person is unable to climb back on board, phone the Coast Guard and continue to assist until help arrives. If someone is critically ill or injured, immediately phone 999 and ask for the ambulance service. They will advise you how best to respond to the patient's needs and will contact other rescue services such as the Coast Guard if required. Then phone us and we shall provide whatever support we can. Well done. Now you are fully equipped to make informed decisions in the highly unlikely event that you should find yourself in a difficult situation. Cruising is just like driving a car, but at a much slower pace and by following the basic rules of the waterway, you will have a splendid and uneventful time. Thank you for watching.